Welcome to Total Fit Heads. Serious fitness for not so serious people. <laughs> Touch my toes before okay. we start. Cool, cool. Yeah. I'm gonna reach that thing on the top shelf. That's not a, <laughs> that's not fair. Uh, I guess it's kind of close because you're born with a certain level of stretchiness, I guess. And ah uh, no, but you could improve your stretchiness and I, no matter how hard I focus, never get any taller. Yep, that's one of the f most famous national basketball sayings. Can't teach tall. <laughs> Is that just their hilarious argument for genetics? I think so. I think when they're like picking between two players, you're like, should we take this guy or that guy? You're like, oh, that guy for sure. Can't teach tall. And then, you know, you can teach everything else. You just can't teach him to be any. Muggsy Bogues could dunk. I learned that from Total Fit Heads podcast. I know. That's crazy. And he actually was 5'3". I thought he was like 5'6", five, 5'5", five, five or whatever. Just looked tiny. In He's NBA my standards. height? Pretty sure he was 5'3". Wow. Also, that's a lie. I lied on my driver's license. I say 5'3", but it's... I mean, maybe three, when five. I wake up. It's 3'5". <laughs> Oh, shut up. I'm a gnome. <laughs> <laughs> I got a pointy hat, so you think that I'm taller. I think he was 5'3". Oh. Yeah, that's crazy. Well, imagine, imagine his skill level in a tall person. 5'3", 1, you want to guess his weight? It's not over 200, now mm. I know. <laughs> 140. 137. That was close. Pretty good. Yeah, he's got to be lean. It's all thighs, I guess, if he's dunking. Thighs? Is that what, is that what does it? Hamstrings? Butt? Hammies and butt. Yeah. Cool. Or calves. I've been doing explosive calf raises to try and Explosive jump. calf raises? Yeah. So, calf machine. So you're just strapped in with weight. You can't, with a barbell, you'll drop it. Or, or holding on to it with dumbbells is harder. So, uh -huh. machine. Machine. And then slowly lower down, and then boom, up. So it's less weight, <laughs> but still the sounds idea intense. Yeah, is trying to use my calves to jump the weight up into the air. Oh boy. I don't know if it's helping at all, I just, I made it up. I'm this is at uh, Globo Gym? No. I'm at a new gym now. <gasps> We're not even talking about stretching. Is there a stretching area in the gym? Yes, and they have these de stre mobility devices. I don't even know how they work. They have like rollers and foot pads and several of them. Do they have that thing that looks like a big spider web out of rubber bands? What? <laughs> no. No? What is that? Oh, uh, it. I don't know what it is. It looks horrifying. It stretches? It's, um... I've seen the cage. That's... It looks like a cage, but instead of metal, it's rubber rubbery it's like huh. those thick rubber bands well that how is that more helpful in a cage because you can just like put your foot up there and it wiggles a little bit it feels good i don't know it's it's almost the same thing as the cage just instead of metal it's, it's uh, wow rubber. i wonder about the bouncing okay because in the 80s oh good now we're talking about mobility nice in the 80s you would you know really jerk your back bounce into the stretch i remember <laughs> I guess it was more 90s because I was in dance class at that point and I remember my jazz teachers would be like and touch and touch like really bounce you down oh, and yeah. um, we learned that's not what you're supposed to do well but now I still see people doing active stretching which would be more of a like arm swing kind of thing so Active stretching, is that what you call it? And static stretching? Is yeah. the other one? So static stretching is just like bend over, touch your... And hold it. Hold, t try to touch your toes and stay there for 10, 20 seconds. Right. That's static stretching? Yes. And active is like, do like a walk, kick in the air, a walk, kick in the yeah. air. Yeah. I wouldn't say that you can active stretch bending forward and touching your toes because then you'd just be bouncing into the stretch. It's more like, yes, kicking, doing functional dance type mm -hmm. things. I think they say that Recently, they figured out that active stretching before athletic performance is, and static afterwards yes. is, is ideal. Right? Static before you could get too loose and not be stable in, say, an Olympic lift. You could get too loose. <laughs> I'm not getting loose at all. I don't stretch before doing any only, but I recognize that 
I definitely have a baseline mobility that I can do that. And that may not be the case for everyone. You have a baseline mobility, but, but you've improved it, haven't you? Could you always do a split? No. And then there was a time my senior year in high school that I could do a split because we had to for senior dance company My mind went in a totally dance. different move. <laughs> Senior in high school, I got dumped uh, for this chick cool. who could do a, di a do a full split, and I was like, Tiffany, <laughs> never again. And I sat in a split <laughs> until I showed her. And I found a kickboxing instructor in the hills of Indonesia. <laughs> <laughs> My legs are being between two pieces of bamboo. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I'm like filthy <laughs> and tattered clothes. <laughs> Oh, yeah, that was my high school experience. Yeah, <laughs> that was senior year of high school. You guys know how it goes. Oh. Uh, we were in a tap number, and we, it was a, uh, what do you call it, fan uh, wave, where one girl starts and does a kick and falls into a split, and the Ooh. next girl does that down the line, and so I had to split. This is in high school? Yeah. Holy moly. All of my other tap dance company gals and mm -hmm. be compared to them. So I got my split only on the right side. Since then, I can convincingly sit in a split for Instagram. <laughs> <laughs> but if you would compare me to Brittany, I do believe even Brittany has commented on my split post saying, point your toes, girl. Yeah. <laughs> So, if you would compare me to someone who can legit do that easily and consistently, it, I can't do a split. There's always a couple of things with that, though. It's like, no matter how specific you think you are at anything, someone will someone come along and be like, hmm, you really ought to point your toes. Oh, right. <laughs> you know what I mean? I was going for a different look that's yeah. my own creative choice. My own aesthetic. Well, that's, that's crazy to me that you... I, I guess... It's crazy to me that, first of all, congratulations, you can do a pseudo split, I guess. Second of all, it's crazy that you can, can Thank you. improve into that, because in my brain, that's impossible. I mean, I know on paper enough people have told me, I know that... People you know, write, write notes to you and hand it over. Yeah, with you a can't quill. get better. <laughs> You're, you don't have to be quite so horrifically inflexible, and then they write it on a scroll put it in a bottle, throw it in the ocean, and then I find it. And I'm like, oh, what is this? And then I pull the thing out, it's like, Psh, you don't have to be so ugly. I mean, inflexible. And I'm like, right, right, right. Thanks, thanks, thanks. thanks. <laughs> now I just want to throw bottles filled with those types of messages into the ocean. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I'm sure they, they, they find who they're supposed to find. And so. then someone sends one back to me. Stop littering. <laughs> Yes, get taller. <laughs> Dang it! Uh, okay, so we have established that you are... I am incredibly not flexible. It's been that way my whole life. Compared to what? Compared to everyone else I've ever been around ever. You Period. don't You don't know anyone that's less flexible I than do not know you. a single person that is less flexible than me. Period. And, I'll go even further than that, I've played on a bunch of sports teams, a bunch of different years, a bunch of different practices, you know. A, I've never met anyone that's as inflexible as me, and B, I've tried, like, really hard, <laughs> you know? I didn't, like, not do it. I stretched before every single high school and college practice. It's part of the, you know, it's what we all did. It wasn't just me. It was everybody. So, potentially, you would be even worse had you not put the time in. Well, now I am even worse because I haven't put the time in Ooh. since whenever. Like, and how does that feel? Terrible. Really? really bad. Just like sitting there, I feel like you're tight. <laughs> I'm extremely tight. I can no longer sit cross-legged on the ground. It hurts Ooh. really bad. It hurts my hips and my knees. I just read one of the God. Uh, one of the number one indicators of your longevity, like how long you're gonna live, is if you can get off the ground without using your hands. But you can't even be on the ground <laughs> without using your hands. Jokes on you. <laughs> Don't even get on the ground. <laughs> I think I can get off the ground without using my hand. What, from like lying down or from just sitting? sitting. Like sitting cross-legged? Yeah. Which... I feel like I could do that. But when you think about adding, you know, 20 years, and you're like... 
just the idea, like there are points, you can take points off for touching your knees to help or, mm. or the ground or whatever. But the idea of being cross-legged and just standing up is hard for mm -hmm. people older than us. I think you were still in the frame even though you are standing on a couch. Just to, <laughs> just to keep this running joke going. Get out! Oh, oh god. I think, uh, I don't know why. I know it's bad, like when I put socks on, I'm like, <laughs> like I'm just flexible enough to get, to your get a sock on, you know? He hasn't cut his toes in years, folks. Right, I know, it's crazy. Cut his toes uh, nails off. <laughs> when I do my, <laughs> When I do my shoes, like I I just barely get it over my the like the front of my foot, and then I like have to like put my foot back down. And I like kick into my heel. Yeah, you know what I mean? it's really bad. Is it easier when you sit down? Uh, not really, because it's the same I, I'm distance. still bending forward. <laughs> wow, you know? now I understand why you don't shave your legs. Yeah, that's bad. You gotta go to the salon. They do a better job anyway. <laughs> I and it's not even just my. Like I thought it was my hips, like my lower body, I guess. It's my shoulders are terrible. That one with the pole, I can't mm, even, mm -hmm. not even close. Like there's no, I can't even, I, I, I have to, to hold point. it like, like my wrist completely bent backwards to hold the top of the pole. Yeah, um, so it's total body. And when I lie on my back, there's a test where you lie on your back, you put your arms straight forward and then you lift them up Towards your yeah, head. your overhead mobility. And you try to get your arms flat. I, I get to like 45 ish. Wow. Yeah. That's why, you, yeah, you can't do overhead press. I can't do a single um, snatch. I've never been able to do a snatch. Yes, you could. With the weight that I do, you could just hold it out here. Well, that's what I do. I, I can do <laughs> that, and I'm pretty good at it. And my, like, when I was doing CrossFit for that six months or whatever, they were like, you have the worst form I've ever seen. It is shocking that you can pick that up. Because you're basically holding it in front of you. I was like, yeah, I know. It's, it's really hard. Do I get a fucking, do I get a check plus for the thing or whatever? You know, I'm like struggling really bad. But yeah, I can't, uh, I've never been able to do a snatch. I do overhead presses. I like dumbbells a lot more because I can't get sure. my, can't get the barbell right. And I, and it's also sort of forward. I never do the one where... Like behind the, the head, the bar yeah, right. Is sort of behind, or like even when you push up, you know how you like your head is supposed to go forward a Punch little bit. Through, yeah. Um, I can't do that at all. Yeah. Oh it's man, really bad. I've seen Stanimal doing behind the back pull downs. I know that I think is bad for your shoulders, though. I've heard. I've heard that too, but the fact that he has the mobility to do that, and he's like three of you. <laughs> I know it's really embarrassing. Wow. Ab you, I wonder if he works on it. Yeah, he must. We gotta, we gotta ask, see we're too busy talking about protein every time we get a bodybuilder on. We gotta ask him about mobility. I know. So yeah. I just realized that if I stuck a kick me sign in the center of your back, you I would have, not be able to get it. I would not be able to reach it. I would have to scratch it off with a tree like a like, bear. <laughs> which is how I scratch my back anyway. It's bad. The other one, like you know when you try, you put one hand behind your head and one hand sort of behind your back the opposite way yeah, and you try to touch, touch your, your hands. hands. People on my wrestling team would like grab their own wrists. Wow. Nuts. And I like barely scrape fingernails with my middle fingers just because that's as close as I can get. Now I know why Maybe. you don't cut your nails either. Right? <laughs> just just giant claws in case there's a mobility test yeah. coming up. <laughs> That's how, that's how you touch your toes. In sixth grade, on the presidential fitness test, mm -hmm. I failed the presidential fitness test because Ooh. I couldn't touch my toes. I couldn't. They do the, the president knows you're gonna die early. I did everything else. I smoked everybody in literally everything else. The shuttle. How many pull-ups did you do? I think like ten <gasps> or fifteen. I, I didn't it do the most. It was more than one. It was a ton, and I mean, it was light, but it was still a ton. And not as much as we talked about this before, Jasmine. Not as much as Jasmine did. Remember, she did like 55 pull ups or something? <laughs> Is that what she did? I think you could either do pull ups or hang on the bar as part of your fitness test. And she hung on the bar for the entire period. And then we were like, all right, we're done. We have to go to social studies. Like, you just get out of here. And she was like, are you sure? <laughs> it was insane. She was such That's a, so funny. the most freakish athlete I've ever seen. She was incredible. She's just, she's the fastest person in school by a mile. By oh, miles. really? 
Jasmine, the greatest athlete I've ever seen. A sixth grade girl. I wonder what she's <laughs> up to now. We had one of those, her name was Amber, she did eight pull-ups. And I, it was baffling to me. And that's when I knew that I'd never do a pull-up in my life. I was like, oh, well, some people are born to do pull-ups. I am not one of those people. I know. Next time. Next time, someday. Next, next incarnation. Well, no, now I need to invent a time machine and go back in time and tell stupid young me, mm -hmm. that's not true, don't believe that, you can do a push-up, I mean, pull-up, but also you'll never get more mobile, that's not good. <laughs> that's a total waste. Uh, okay, so, yeah, so here's been, my advice for been you, that way my whole so life, stupid. I don't know what to do, it's, everything hurts, I can't, I've never been able to solve it. I, I feel like I've tried, kind of, but not a lot. But, you know, I'm ready. Hit me. Did, well, this is also Kayla. Kay, or Maurer. Katie. Kayla Maurer? Kaylee. Kaylee Maurer. The Kayla is a type of workout. She's a... The Kayla was a very famous workout girl. YouTube girl. Oh, okay. Five, ten years ago. She's I thought awesome. it was a CrossFit wad. <laughs> There's several of them. <laughs> and it's just like touch your toes. <laughs> I'm like, no, Kayla! Okay, Kaylee Maurer also said this, because we talked about, well, I'm all over the place. Brittany has suggested holding and that, like, pushing against yeah. the direction that you want to stretch and then push it and then hold further, stretch further, and then kind of resist that and then Sink stretch into further. Sink into it more, right? Kayla was, Kaylee was just like, no, just sit in it. Just sit there for an extended period of time. And I'm leaning towards that one, that it just needs to be an insane amount of time in the position, because that's also what Juji Mufu said when he learned how to do a center split. Oh. And he, that's how he got famous, I believe. He was doing uh, America's Got Talent or uh. something like one of those shows. One foot on one chair, one foot on another chair. A barbell overhead with, I don't know, I want to say... 135 because it was probably 245s in a mm -hmm. mail bar mm -hmm. and then the chairs separate and he goes down into a spl full split with the barbell over his head oh, God, and he talks about not having that mobility and then just watching television sitting in that split so imagine just that's it you're just there and you're gonna be there for hours like an hour yeah like that that's how you get to actual change. Because, sure, you put in 15 minutes of a bunch of different stretches, you're barely ever really... Yeah, stretched. Or training your body to get further. That's my guess. This is all based on all of the inputs that I've had thus far. And how long does it take? I don't know. i got to look up how long it took him to do that. The, in the entire series... <laughs> Oh, friends. Game of Thrones. <laughs> Game of Thrones. And that last season is brutal because every episode's an hour plus. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but that's also why I say that I'm not really improving at this point is because I do put, you know, a solid 15, 20 minutes in on stretching every night. But mm -hmm. is it really focused on improving one movement and sitting there in it until my body goes, okay, I'm going to do this? Yeah. So, yeah. And day after day. I don't even know. One time I was in, a, like, do you warm up before you stretch? One time I was in a hotel and I was stretching and a woman ran over to me. She was like, you're about to tear your hamstrings. I'm a yoga instructor. I need to stop you right here. I was like, what are you, is this like a doctor on an airplane situation? Like, what is happening? She was like, you cannot be doing whatever you're doing. <sighs> okay. Just like sort of like, and she like gave me a mini lesson and it was the most embarrassing thing ever was it about warming up or was it just you were she she had suggested that i like should warm up before i even started stretching because i'm so inflexible huh i've so, not heard that i thought stretching was warming up that's what i thought but so you don't you don't warm up for you well stretching is a part of the warm up but then there's also yeah a warm up where you want to get blood flowing but that's for a workout not for not for a stretch yeah, i don't know ugh now i gotta get on the assault bike before i do splits <laughs> And again, this is solely for Instagram. Yeah. Like, why else would I, I mean... What do you mean? And to live longer. You just said that. I think I have a baseline level of flexibility that I'm, I'm good. I don't need to my, maintain what I have. It's just going to be there. My worry is, yeah. as I get into old man 
territory, it'll be even worse and worse, you know? Oh, and if I'm already okay, starting anyway. from, like, the flexibility of a 150-year-old man, then, my God, you know, it's just gonna get... I hope Brittany likes putting shoes on you. It's literally gonna be a lot of slides, a lot of, a lot of loafers, that's for sure. Yeah. <laughs> He wears only Crocs because he can't touch his feet. Because <laughs> they're cool, guys, not because I can't touch I'm my own slip feet. Slip on my Crocs and go to my pedicure. Oh, boy. Because I like it. <laughs> I really don't like pedicures. I, I got one the other day. I don't think I've ever gotten one. Never ever? You? Why'd you get one the other day? I got one because I took Brittany to go get one. Because she was going to Vegas or somewhere with the pool or the beach. Yeah. And I was like, oh, you should get your nails done. Let's go do it. Ha ha. Wouldn't this be a fun date? And then it was until I sat down and the lady was like, <laughs> and I was like, whoa, lady, what are you doing? And then Brittany's like, that's what, that's what a pedicure is. Do you understand? And I'm like, cool, 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 cool. And I was just like gripping the edge of the thing, like, the, <laughs> you know, like white knuckling it. Um, yeah, it was, it was great. It was really fun. Did you feel refreshed after? Uh, no, I felt weird really weird I didn't I didn't love it it was kind of like um, you know like when you're in the sauna and you come out and you just feel like kind of puffy yeah it felt like that on my feet because they, huh. they soak your feet for like 10 or 15 minutes in warm water to soften up the they nails massage you? they give you a little bit of a massage a foot and sort of like a half calf massage not quite a calf mm. like a whatever it's yeah. like below what a calf. tease what is that? Below your calf, your ankle. Yeah, I guess they give you like a high ankle massage, or at least this one did. And then Shin. she click clicked. Um, Which bone did you? My... Did they cuticle anything? Yeah, that hurt too. Really? There, 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 was she it was supposed really... to hurt. I thought it was supposed to be pampering. I don't know. I think it's like good for you pampering, like how, um, like a lot of these beauty things are really incredibly painful. <laughs> yeah, like working out. I got a facial one time, and, and, and that was, like, one of the most painful experiences of my life. Really? Because I was, like, I was late high school, early college, somewhere in there, so my skin was just blackheads everywhere. <laughs> and this lady was like, oh, yeah! Cracks your knuckles. <laughs> <laughs> you know? And then just squeezed the sh every, like, like nail pinched my skin every half second. Individually? It hurt so bad. I And I didn't even know... At that point, I was so sort of green, I didn't even know what it looked like when you squeeze a black hat out, mm -hmm. so I'm sure it looked great for from her end. But yeah, it hurt real bad. I walked out of there like, I went 15 rounds or whatever. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it was really tough. Uh, but anyway, so the pedicure was great. You should definitely go get one. I highly recommend. Huh. Yeah, I mean, I guess. I, the idea of just sitting and doing nothing else for, what, 30 minutes? Yeah. Uh, it's that's, that's really that's your my that's brain. your terror. That's yeah, that was my nightmare. <laughs> that's your nightmare. I guess I could bring my laptop. I'd have to build a <laughs> device to set my laptop on to not bother them. We gotta to get you that thing that the green screen guy does. Yeah, the, it goes out in the world. Yeah, we did. It's like a it's like a harness, I guess. It's it's like a it's like a, it would be like a tray table on an airplane, except it folds, folds down, down from, from your you. torso, and then you put your laptop on yeah. it, and then you can just... <laughs> Love it. That's, that's perfect for you. I'm in. Call, um, useless inventions guy. But see, he's doing that so he can work but experience the world, whereas <laughs> I want to experience the world, but I'd rather work. Uh, I just thought of a really good invention for him to do, but I guess... What, then? You'd have to do it. Unnecessary inventions? Yeah. What? Uh, it would be like a way to block out the world when you're on your laptop. And so in theory, it would be like goggles and like, like, like how noise canceling headphones yeah. only focus on one thing. It'd be like that, except for just you and your laptop. So I'm picturing like a big sock that like goes around <laughs> the back of your head and envelops your laptop and then that's it. Yeah. I love it. That seems reasonable. I don't think it's useless enough. You'd be like a, like an ostrich, but working. Yeah, like that. Like you <laughs> bury your head in that. Hmm. I haven't talking to him. It was a while ago, but I was like, I really want to make an instrument that's so difficult to play because you have to do some sort of absurd action to make it. So you know, 
play a piano, you push a button, right? So, but to key. make this... It's called button. a key, Allie. Thanks. A oh, piano okay, is full of it. keys. Write that down. Buttons. Uh, to play this instrument, I want to have, like, one revolution on the assault bike. Or, like, some <laughs> sort of, like, a push-up. Or, like, some crazy, elaborate physical thing that I have to do to make the note happen and then I have to do it over and over again to play the instrument. That's the closest I've gotten to a concept. Yeah, it's almost like um, like if, if they could be like really heavy keys or something. Yeah. Like you have to push with the force, yeah, super yeah, high yeah. force, but how would you do that? Or, or the keys could be like really high so you'd have to like jump and push uh, it yeah. every single time. Or up like big and up high so I'd box jump onto them. Or you know what you could do? You remember you did that, um, there's those walls with the, all the lights and each one lights up and you have to yeah. punch the one as it lights up. Oh. So like it, boxing. So it's yeah. hard, it's it's not force, but it's way more difficult. Yeah. Huh. We'll workshop it. We got, we got something there. I mean, the accordion's already absurd. You have to pull open this weird bladder thing. What about, um... Bellow. The bellows, that's a great word. That's the thing that you use to uh, blow on your um, Fireplace. Fire. What about, um, you know how, you know how there's those music boxes and it's a, it's like a cylinder of metal with little yeah, bumps off of it pranks. and it's each key and like ding, yeah. ding, ding, ding. What if you made one of those, but in order to work it, you had to like pull a car or a fire truck or whatever. That's so cool. You know what I mean? Yes. Yes. There you go. I like that. <laughs> No, all you gotta do is find a fire truck. Uh. <laughs> right. Yikes. But then I can play music. Yeah, there you go. It makes me think of Demi. She's always pulling trucks. I know. You could just, you could just like get some gas, you know, or yeah, well, turn, the, well, turn the truck on. Prices these days, am I right? <laughs> gas prices are down, I think. Oh, and good. We'll, we'll, we'll see whenever this episode comes out. Oh, yeah. Things can change. You could just bike. Oh, anyway, anyway, so mobility. So, you think I should sit into... Oh, so the opposite, the one that Brittany was talking about, and I've actually heard this also, which is that, like, if you're doing, let's just say, a split, right. you, you go to the split to where it's difficult, and then instead of just sort of holding it, you un you unsplit, right? You, tr you push, you have to have something resisting you, so it's either a towel over your foot that you're pulling over your head, and you're resisting into the towel, or if you're doing a split on the ground, then you push into the ground yeah. to kind of resist the opposite direction of the split that you're doing. And then you for so five you, seconds. You hold it for five, and then you sort of exhale, then let and it. And then release, and supposedly you'll go lower. I don't know if it's just placebo. Yeah, it, but it feels like you can go lower. I've heard someone else describe that same thing though, so I don't think Brittany made it up. Mm -hmm. I think it's like no, an actual it's a thing, um, for sure. Practice. Have you ever had someone stretch you? That's horrifying. Yeah, it's the worst. I had one, um, it was like a physical check. And the guy was like, all right, tell me when it hurts. And he, I was lying on a table and he started lifting my heel up. And I was like, okay, 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 okay. I like freaked out and he was like, are you, hold on, are you, are you serious? <laughs> and I was like, yeah, that's, that's about, I mean, you can go a little further. And then I like started bending my knee and he was like, you can't bend your knee, your leg has to be straight. And I was like, all right, well then yeah, stop. I can't move it. Yeah. And he was like, you're an NCAA athlete? And then, what? And I was like. You're like the, was it Muggsy Bogues? Yeah, I'm like the Muggsy Bogues. If, just imagine if your level of talent had flexibility. I have, oh my God. The world. Wow. My God, what would happen? Also, flexibility versus mobility. What's, I don't know, what's the difference? They're the same thing, right? I think so. So, I think mobility was just invented so CrossFitters, CrossFit dudes specifically, didn't have to say that I'm working on stretching. <laughs> <laughs> well, we need a manlier word for stretching. Not a manlier, but like a less female word for stretching. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm, gonna be, I'm gonna be mobile. That's it, I get around. Oh, that's funny. It's also funny to, to think of like CrossFit dudes thinking of, all right, we got to do this thing, but it's like, it might be perceived as girly. So we need a name for it. That's <laughs> yeah, because my collared shirt is salmon. 
It's yeah. salmon, definitely yeah. not. For pink. sure, it's salmon, not not, not like dark pink. Oh, that's so funny. Oh, that that. Uh, oh, you're on the bike. You're, I'm just gonna hop on the bike. Yeah, but it's an assault bike. <laughs> Did you see I changed mine? To, um, consent bike? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that was a while ago, right? Yeah. I'm sure. Obviously, every time I make something, I'm like, check this out. <laughs> uh, okay, so my current stretching routine oh, yeah. is always in the evening. Mm -hmm. And I do splits. I now do, uh, what is this called? It's not pike. It's starts with a P though, Plank? where, no, where you're on your back and then you pull your legs up over your head. It oh, yeah. feels awful and I can't breathe and I'm getting much better at it, but it's still, it's just so un unenjoyable. I forget what that was called, but we did that a lot too. And then you try to get your knees on either side of your head. Yeah. And then, or you then I'll like leg. roll over. You're not straight leg, you're, you're bending. No, your it's just getting my body to get into that position. I'm not even thinking about technique. Uh, Planche? No, that's not what it's called. I, free, I like that. We used to do that one a lot. I used to do a lot of neck exercises, so that was like kind of part of it. Oh, yeah. I forgot that that's like a big thing you told me in, in wrestling. To get up with your neck. We call those bridges. Yeah. I don't know. Again, wrestling has a lot of dumb names for have, stuff, like shoot, like feet. <laughs> have you, yeah, hips. Have you seen that halo device that you wear on your head and then attach to a cable machine? Yeah. You've used them. Uh, I use the one that just has a chain on it and you would put a, a plate and you, so, so instead what? of the cable machine. <laughs> such a weird. It looked like a medieval cable. torture device. Yeah. It was so dumb, but. Yeah, so so it sort of goes. So the weight is sort of attaching to the crown of your head, basically. Like, and then so you you bend over so your face is facing the ground, and the chains go like by past your eyes and straight down to the ground around a, a plate. Yeah. And then you like you look up. Does it bang you in the nuts? No, because the chain's really long. Okay. And, and I'm standing and bending over at the waist. Oh, okay. Or I'm like holding on to something, okay. bracing. Uh, and so you, you, we would do stuff like that, and then you flip over and you, you do the forward one. Although that one, that one was harder with the chain thing. But yeah, you just, you look and feel so incredibly stupid. But it's important. But it's important. Do a lot of wrestlers have giant necks? Yes. In fact, you can see your neck growing <gasps> um, because we would wear a collared sh a shirt and tie on game day, match day. And uh, <gasps> by the end of the season, that top button's getting real tight and choking you a little That's bit. That's so cool! It was so How awesome. Weird. Yeah. The, uh. the actual good one is you lie on your back um, and you sort of bend your knees so that your feet are flat on the ground. Are you with me? So okay. your feet are like kind of by your, your heels You're are by, by your, your butt. butt. Yeah. And then you bridge up. So you put your hips up, you get your hips off the ground <gasps> and you get the small of your back off the ground. And then you get your upper back off the ground. And then before you know it, you're holding yourself up uh, by the back of your head and just your heels. And I, you hold yourself. Oh and then God. you like go down and then you go back up. Oh and then you God. reach an arm across your face and then go back and reach around that way. So you're getting, this side. So you're getting side to side. and Yeah. Because there are moves where there were times of wrestling where you have to hold yourself up by your head because you need both your arms to do stuff like whoa it's it was awesome and then so you're holding you're on your the back of your head on your heels and then you f spin around real quick without using your hands and now you're on your forehead and your toes and you're um that's it that's you can it. get up with just your neck i'm convinced you're gonna live forever so now yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay the opposite you're on the ground you can only use your neck yeah <laughs> Can I can I backflip kip up into can I kip into a front flip and land on my feet? Oh my god! Oh, uh, so I am now disappointed that my split doesn't have a neck day. Also, yeah, your entire true. posterior chain includes your neck. <laughs> also, also, the everyone in CrossFit that just says that they can do every sort of functional thing that comes at them has weak necks. There's no. Neck stuff going on at the CrossFit Games. Your necks are trash, guys. 
I would love for them to program some weird neck thing and then everyone just to absolutely fail because that's not... Yeah, it would have to be like the bridge. That's what I was talking about. And then they'd have to yeah. start putting weight like on your hips yeah. or something. I guess the functional thing there is if you lost your arms and you needed to get up and out of the apocalypse, can you do it? If and, and when. Yeah. We never know. Wow. To yeah. to me. Let's see. I'm sure. I'm sure she'd be like, well, like this. <laughs> and it'd be like perfect. And you're like, okay, well, we tried. Oh. We almost got her that time. Weird. Yeah, neck. neck uh... And then, um, unfortunately, eventually, if you get a really good neck, you end up looking like a thumb. <laughs> <laughs> and that was always one of the best insults to somebody with a huge neck. Yeah, but, I mean, they earned it. Yeah, I'd, I'd be proud if I was a thumb. Uh, yeah, this guy. <laughs> so, neck mobility. I can tell that I'm getting super tight. I started doing all Olympic lifting again. Mm. And all of this... Okay, so I saw this on TikTok. Put your hand on your chest here and kind of push down. So, hands kind of above our heart. And then look up. And you can feel this stretch. And that, oh, yeah. that gets super tight because whenever I, I, I basically use my face to try and get the weight up. Like I <laughs> make this face every time I do an Olympic lift and it's just, all of this is so tense. I went to Nathan Lazinski, we had him on the chiropractor mm -hmm. and he did some sort of pokey release thing here, which was absolutely the most insane, awful, great feeling oh, ever. God. He, I, I don't know what this muscle is called, but he shoved into it and it like exploded into my head and down Ugh, my chest. That's such a weird feeling. Ah, and then I got to experience it again on the other side. <laughs> weird. But I do think that's because I get so tense. I'm not doing the grace face like mm -hmm. Lanny Cooper told us to. Wow, so many callbacks. Also, I think when a lot of times you'll like, like especially with pushing motion, a lot of times, like you'll like push with your neck a little mm -hmm. bit, and yeah, um, and I'm I can tell that I am very locked up, and definitely have lost a lot of range of motion in my neck because in jazz class we would do that every start of every class was just neck stuff, mm. which is weird because people don't do neck stuff now. Neck stuff also sounds like kind you of into neck somehow. stuff. <laughs> But I'm not exactly sure what it would mean. Now we're going to show up on Next Stuff YouTube. You get a bunch of great <laughs> nice. new heads. Ugh. Yeah, forget feet stuff. I'll, sell, I'll start selling neck picks, you know what I mean? <laughs> neck picks. I haven't seen my neck in years. Now it's, it's like oh, a relatively yeah. new thing. Naked neck. Looks like you're growing it back in though, right? I don't know what I'm doing. I just trimmed the bottom today because I wanted to, um, we had to do a, uh, I had to do a video for something. You needed the hair to put on flocking. <laughs> flocking A. <laughs> uh, so what, you wanted just a cleaner look? So I, I cleaned it up just to see what it would look like because I wasn't sure how to cut an actual a beard. I, you know, I, I oh right, really... the neck thing. Um, and I think tomorrow I'm just gonna <laughs> gonzo. Again? Yeah, I've been, I've been doing that. Hmm. So I still, yeah, this is sort of uh, inside baseball, but I'm still doing videos for the Beard Club. So yeah. I have to have something of a beard when I film these videos. This counts for them, right? This is enough, yeah, for sure. Okay. Because they're catering to all levels of... But it's hard to get that wizard level. I, I'm sure they wanted to keep you around. They did. Uh, but I told, them, I told them I was going to do it, and I was kind of like, I guess this is goodbye. You know, it was like a breakup call. Oh. And they were like, oh my god, no, we, we're getting into men's skincare, we're selling moisturizers, we're doing creams. That's awesome. Like, we'll, we'll be all right there with your journey when you grow it back, and, or like growing in type thing. Yeah. And I was like, all right, yeah, that's great, thank you. It was really sort of um, unexpected. That's, that's awesome. Yeah, well, yeah, you also make great work for them, so of course. Thank you. Well, it's, it's you know, it's TikTok. There is no higher calling than then vertical video under <laughs> 15 seconds because any longer and people will swipe away. Yes, indeed, my art reaches many. High class. Uh, High have bro. you ever had someone shave your beard for you? You know, the straight razor thing? I have, I really, 
it's very weird. <laughs> it's very disconcerting. A because in The Godfather, the guy gets whacked when he's getting shaved. Oh, I was gonna say Sweeney Todd. Never seen Godfather. You ever seen that musical? You know the stage. There's a there's a filmed stage version of it with <sighs> Angela Lansbury. You can watch that. Yes, I'm familiar. I'm familiar with Sweeney Todd, but it is. I guess that in a nutshell is you and me. <laughs> Oh, that you're referencing the song. I'm like, you know Godfather that thing, scene. and you're like, yeah, and I'm like, The Godfather, <laughs> and you're like, Sweeney, to yep. <laughs> yep. Which is a shame. I know we've talked about this before. Uh, all of my Italian fans will be so mad. Yeah, but you haven't seen a million movies in general, Correct. right? It's not just like, you're not anti-Godfather. You're, you're like, I haven't seen any movies right. at all. If I'd seen Dude, Where's My Car, but not... Godfather, that would be pro I haven't. Okay, all right. That's <laughs> you weren't sure. Uh, it's just checking, just uh. double checking. Brittany's the same way. She has seen like literally no movies at all, big time movies that I'll like reference. Uh, like we just watched The Matrix the other day. I'm sure you haven't seen it either. I have. Okay, cool. But that's just because it's like philosophy 101. Yeah. Brain yeah. of a vat. But so it's, it's like a million movies that level. Of course, she hasn't seen The Godfather, and we went to. Um, the we went to a premiere, yeah. Of I the went show. to the where they shot it. Yeah. Did you? I went to a party at that mansion. Yeah, I did too. We were at the same party. Thanks for the heads up, Spring. Yeah. Maybe it was a different day. But anyway, we were going to that, and she was like, I haven't seen The Godfather. Is that important? I was like, kind of, yeah. <laughs> so we watched like the first hour. Oh, wow. That's good. And then, uh, but the, the annoying thing is, so she hasn't seen a million movies like that. And so now I'm like, oh, it, it's from this famous movie, um, Gone with the Wind. Or it's from this famous movie, Wizard of Oz, or You've whatever. you seen Gone with the Wind? Of course I've seen Gone with the Wind. I'm not a savage. And then, but every once in a while, it, so nine, 99 times, she'll be like, oh, yeah, it's crazy. I haven't seen that. You know, I was busy, you know, dancing and whatever. Like, my childhood was more so active dancing. than watching movies, you fat loser. And I'm like, okay, cool. <laughs> and then every once in a while, she'll be like, oh, uh, of course I've seen Fast and Furious Tokyo Drift. <laughs> what do you think I am? And I'm like, you know what? I don't know. I, I don't know where this is, you know, eclectic taste a little bit. So <laughs> so now I'm just like, from that movie? Uh, I don't know if you've uh, seen it. Seen it. <laughs> you trying to read it? <laughs> yeah, exactly. So you never know. So, you, so now I'm, not, I'm in the business of not assuming. Anyway. Okay. Oh, so we were on. You've had someone straight razor your face. Yeah, I didn't. I didn't like it. And also, I don't. I actually don't think razor razor on your on your hair growing skin is that good for you. I think it it feels kind of bad for you. Yeah. Well, the whole idea of exfoliating is good, and I feel like it takes away all that dead skin. Oh, that's true. So I don't know. Because, the, I mean, the Kardashians are getting stabbed by tiny little micro needles. I know. They're in... Bleeding. Some people say that, um, like, the beer club sells a derma roller, which is tiny little micro needles yeah. in a roller, and they say that, that helps stimulate... Um, Collagen. Well, it stimulates gro beard, regrowth. beard growth. Oh. Hair follicles. Yeah, because the blood on flow. section where... What? Because you're like, it's... Grow hair. I need this beard in. I know. It's crazy. Gotta people shoot. Are, Gonna shoot from yeah, the beard club. I'm way behind. Uh. So that's what I do now. Is I have been shaving it down and then growing out for a couple okay. of weeks and then sort of filming beard beard stuff and I think it's going well and that's, that's wonderful nice for me. Good for them for recognizing your talent. Thank you. And not making you stretch. You know we haven't talked about. Uh, I know some athletes who shave their legs and arms and body and everything. Not just swimmers. Oh, really? Not just swimmers. Swimmers, I, I, I guess I understand. I don't really. I do. I think I've said this to you. I probably said it on this podcast, but women swimmers who don't shave their head are not serious about their sport. <laughs> you care too much you about your appearance. Well, the cap? No, because you're still in that bump. You still have to deal <laughs> what with... What if the bump is water... More water dynamic? Yeah. Fine. Because... Didn't um, a, either the last or a couple Olympics ago, a bunch of guys were going out with those wetsuits? Oh, but they those? were illegal. They ended up being... Why? Because they're too fast. Yeah. 
They were, they were like performance enhancing equipment. And so they enhanced allowed. it too much? Is that yeah. what happened? Oh, I didn't know they were, they were banned? They were banned. Wow. Also, honestly, guys too should shave their everything. Sure. In general. Yeah. <laughs> For beauty. Just everyone looking like Baywatch, but they're, they're bald too. Right. Everyone looking like they were just born. <laughs> if we did that and then banned all clothing, you uh, you could still judge people based on their fitness level and skin color. Sure. I'm trying to get rid of any and sort of sunburn. All <laughs> <laughs> oh, right, no protection allowed. <laughs> Look, I'm just trying to get to a better society where we can't pre prejudge people. Oh, I guess we'll be in the metaverse, and then you can just sure just pick your own. Yeah. But then you're still prejudging based on your choice of... Oh, so we all have the same avatar. Nice. We all have to have the same avatar, and then it's only based on your personality. Right. And not your looks or... Can you can your avatar work out? No. The point is that we all look the same. So you what can... do you mean? Okay, or now we're just living in AOLIM conversations. <laughs> I remember my buddy Just had the uh, chat room. This is stupid. <laughs> my buddy had a boxing game, video game, where it was it was fun. You you're a boxer, and you know A is right hand and B is left hand hook or whatever. That sounds like a blast. Yeah, it was really great. It's not like something you can do in real life. Anyway, so we were doing. Um, he was doing like career mode, where like you start with a like a very crappy oh blank or um, blank meaning like. Uh, you help you. You have so many attribute points to sure. attribute, like speed or power or whatever. What you're born with. And so then um, you you get better by winning fights, and then you get better um, points and blah blah blah. So I come over to his house one day where he's like playing his video game. I'm like, what 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 is what are you doing right now? He's like, oh, I'm training. And he was like pressing X, and the guy was doing push-ups. Oh man. And I'm like, this is it. This is the dumbest thing I've ever seen. You could just go do push-ups. <laughs> That's how I feel when I see people play Guitar Hero. <sighs> I know. I know. No, that's not true. That's how I feel when I play Guitar Hero. When I see someone play Guitar Hero, especially the people that are good, I'm like, wow, that's awesome. You spent a lot of time to, to do that. Yeah, that's sick. I'm so impressed. Also, I wonder about um, like DJs who have that b button box. Yeah. And they program all that stuff. And they're like, dude, whatever. DJ's not a real musician. I'm like, those are just buttons. Kind of like a piano has buttons. Sure. Like you said earlier. But also... You I say just... keys, but you said earlier buttons. buttons. <laughs> you say keys. Well, to each his own. <sighs> but you, uh, with a DJ, it really feels like you just record it once and then play that back exactly as you do it. I'm saying when they, they have that... Uh, what is that thing called? A trigger. I, I don't know. MIDI trigger. I have. They're sitting. Right yeah. There. So, but you program a sound to a button, right? And then right. you actually so push the buttons. The only unique thing there is if they're improvising and kind of make it up on the fly, so yeah. that your live performance is a little different. Otherwise, it's like you should just press play. Just play the song. You should. But fine. It's also fun to see them do that. I think it's fun to see someone do it live. Yeah. And and if they're skilled at whatever skill that is, oh, you know, man. anyone can play yeah. the guitar, but you want to see this guy that you're a fan of play it really, really well. I'm trying to think. I don't remember what book I was reading. Uh, flex. Uh, Nerd Flex. Yeah. Okay, excuse me. It was an audio book while I was flocking something. So. <laughs> <laughs> Flocking. Wait, we brought this up twice now. Flocking, Flocking a. meaning to pu putting adhesive well, down and then fibers on top of that to create a velvet surface. That's not a mispronunciation of something else. She was flocking somebody. Get not out of here. Okay. Ah, now I can't remember the name of the book. But the piano competitions. The people that compete at the highest level are so good and so close in talent to each other that is imperceptible. You know, like how close the 100 meter sprint sure. is, right? And it's like diminishing returns in terms of getting to that high of a level. And so the number one thing that indicates who's going to win is what they look like when they're performing on the piano, not how their piece sounded. That's what they're judged on? Yeah, but oh that's God. not... That's not written in the rules. They did a study where they just played the track. Uh -huh. And all the judges gave different answers, and then they played the track, and you watch the person perform it. 
and all the judges picked the person that was most dramatic moving. Whoa, what? Yeah. Not the hottest. Oh, that's funny. <laughs> so. But, so that, but and what does dramatic looking mean? Like they look like you know, a piano like, player. Really getting into really cr- pulling the sound yeah. from the buttons. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> and the, those things on the bottom, the uh, the step pushes, <laughs> the step buttons, the foot buttons. Oh my God, feet! <laughs> he has great hips when he's playing the piano. Anyway, he has good fingers. It's an argument for playing the piano. We call it fingers. We call it fingers. <laughs> well, it's one of the competitions in the Total Fit Heads Open. Fingers. <laughs> I'm gonna win. Fingerling. <laughs> That's crazy. Yeah. I'm I'm, just, I'm like mystified by. Do they all play the same piece? Yeah. Is it like an incredibly? It must be an incredibly difficult. Piece yes, to really play difficult or piece or really talented pianists. This was elite level, right? Yeah. And so the only way to tell them apart is to be like, well, that guy. Looks like he's dancing with it. Yeah. And that guy's not having as good of a time. Weird. But the judges didn't know they were doing that. They just thought that they heard a better piece. You gotta get into um, the voice, masked singer, whatever. Some sort of a combination of that. You know, those, those shows? Yeah. Where they're not looking, they just hear the. Yeah, they uh, just hear it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Huh. Anyway, mobility. Oh, so we talked about what I do for my mobility. What's what do you your think routine? kind of warm ups they do for the pianos? I don't know. I should know Those too because pianists. I, I mean, so you just start playing wave. really is like scales and just sort of get into it. I, my dad had a grippy thing. Yeah. As a kid, I would play the, the one that that measured or bass one of the and guitar ones? and piano. Um, I just got to measure one. Oh, very cool. I know, I'm so excited. Did I tell you about this? I, I'm going to bring it next time we do an episode of and we're going to compete. Excellent. I will masturbate furiously for the next, <laughs> before the next Practice. episode. I'm going to get my strength up. Uh, okay, so my dad had not a measure one, just one to help you yeah. get more strength. And all, it was all the individual fingers, not just Love one that. grippy thing. Because I know my brother had a grippy thing. It was Hulk Hogan branded, too. You know, just the... The two hand grips and a wire in between. Mm-hmm. I just looked those up recently. They go up to 100 pounds or maybe even more. They're really, really heavy. Or yeah. Heavy. I don't know if that's the right word, but really like, they're really, really difficult after a while. So the number one indicator of how long you're going to live is grip strength. Whoa! Yeah. I feel but good that's about because that. it's a really good test to show overall strength and overall strength shows that you're not having sarcopenia and muscle wasting and so that's why that's the case it's not like work on your grip and you'll live longer right i think that's the biggest takeaway that i need to remind myself is that like (laughs) no 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 don't like get flexible and brush your teeth and work on your grip that doesn't mean you're gonna live longer it's an indicator yeah yeah right 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 Ah, so I know that my dad had that to get better at piano. I think that maybe that's like a thing. I, I we used to just do pull-ups in like the door frame. <gasps> that's know? such a ninja warrior thing to do. Yeah, it was, it's difficult. It's so hard. It's, and we used to do pull-ups, push-ups on our fingertips. And there was this guy, one of the Harvard coaches was this guy from Russia named Granit. He's the coolest guy in the world. <laughs> he used to do finger uh, push-ups. What? Yeah. What? Pointer and thumb? He would, he would, well, first we would do regular push ups and then we would do on your fingertips, and that was supposed to help your grip really, really, a lot. And then he would just sort of start taking fingers away and <laughs> <he would laughs> keep going. It was awesome. And just, but just do it with his beard. He also invented a front headlock. Or, no, he didn't invent a front headlock. He had killed multiple people with a front headlock. Or so he I said. I remember you telling me about this. That's insane. And then the more I look back on it, the more I'm like, was that real? Or did he just tell me that? And I was in the seventh grade. Set of skills. Not, yes. Oh, right. He just made it up. <laughs> I'm like, wow, really? And he's like, uh, yeah, anyway. <laughs> and that's like stuck with me for the rest of my life. My stretching routine. Oh, yeah. Um, I, I used to have one in. Um, on sports teams, um, and it was like, it was bend for, 
feet together, hang straight down. One foot over the other foot, hang straight down. One foot over the other foot, hang straight down. Yeah. And then like butterflies, calf stretches, that was pretty much it. Now what I'm thinking of doing is the arm torque um, and sort of a runner's lunge. That's a big one. Yeah. And a okay. runner's lunge where I like push my knee out. That's another big one. Hips. Uh, hips. And then there's one where I like, I will squat down with my back against a wall. And so I'll squat as low as I can with my back. And Which then I'll- standing? Yeah. <laughs> and then I try to push my knees out mm -hmm. and that's something. Um, and then that's pretty much it. I mean, I just get embarrassed and then Brittany's like, I'll give you a full workout if you, or a full routine if you want. And then I forget about it and then that's it. I'm embarrassed. <laughs> and then I die when I'm 20 years too early. You know what I mean? If you had to pick one to get better at, Hamstrings for sure. So yeah, you would just wish you could touch your toes. Yep, never been able to do that. Not not even close. Can't even get to forty five to ninety degrees. Well, a part of this is that I know on a deload week I'm super flexible, but every other week I'm sore still from leg day, and then tomorrow's leg day, so I never <laughs> get a chance to actually fully flex. Oh, that's so weird that you, it varies week to week. Yeah. Yeah, and I've, maybe I guess... I'll, maybe I'll get into it. I don't know. I can't... I, it's just so demoralizing because I've tried. It's never worked. And I'm also yeah. starting from such a terrible, terrible starting spot. Well, then that means ho hopefully the improvement curve is pretty big. That's true. If you're That's that true. bad, getting better is rewarding and fast. And I am. Yeah. Oh, I started working on this. Have you ever heard of uh, Chirp Wheel? No. Uh, it's just a wheel. It's just like a circle. It's about this, about as thick as uh, a hand from your wrist to your middle finger. And it's got padding and it's like a plastic, you know, circle. <laughs> I don't know, how to, a cylinder, there we go. And padding on the outside. And you put it on your back, you lay on it and kind of help your spine make more of a curve. Mm. Although, Why I've heard going your lumbar? lower lumbar, it's a little bigger. So right. I guess it's easier to get into. Um, mm -hmm. If you go too low, then it's bad for you. But, you should, but it, like, the upper, I forget what this area is called, but, like, basically the ribs area where your spine mm -hmm. is, I am have zero mobility there, and I didn't know it. My oh. physical therapist and my chiropractor have been like, yeah, this is, this is not moving. And they'll either like crack it or whatever. They're like, it's, it's moving, it's moving. <laughs> and they're like, no, no, no. So yeah, from like my shoulder to my mid ab is just stuck. And stuck so I've been forward. working, yeah, just like stuck in one spot, right? Not, fl it should be able to flex the way that the lower back does. So if you ever sit to a cobra pose, mm -hmm. you know, I can do that, but that's because my lower back just bends and the rest of my the rest of my back is like super straight and not mobile where it should be a bend all the way from hips up to your neck. So I've been working with a chirp wheel to try and fix that. Yeah, I've seen that one too. Um, but I guess, yeah, I should move to uh, just a foam roller because that would be smaller and harder. More. I guess, you, I guess it's wherever you start from. Yeah, so the runner's lunge, the one thing I've been doing is like a runner's lunge, like, except for on a, um, a workbench. Oh. Which is like slightly easier for me. It's not, it's not quite as impossible. <laughs> Everything's So impossible. what, your front foot that's bent goes up on the bench? Yeah. Okay. So your back foot's down, your front foot. And you just sort of hips into it. Yeah. And okay. then you can also push your knee out a little bit at the end. Adductor. Yeah. Are you tight there? Everywhere. Yeah. Is there any way you're not tight? Morals. <laughs> Very loose. No, really? Everywhere. It's, yeah. it's really, really bad. I am pleased with my ankle mobility. I can get really low in a squat and it's not oh, difficult cool. at all. I, I feel like that's a rough one. Especially, that's especially not fun to work on. Yeah. You just get your ankles more stretched so that you can squat lower. It's just... Yeah, not rewarding. Not fun. You ever do this after like a good grip deadlift workout? Oh yeah. The 
bar up and down. And then the fun one is when you put your hands together and you work, wiggle around like that. You should be by the mic. There would be just a million cracks. Yeah, still like, happening. It's like popcorn. Silence. Oh. Oh. Oh, we got one. Timing. <laughs> I also do, I use a hip hook. It's like a so right. I don't know if you're familiar with that. Yeah. I, mean. I don't know if that, does that count as mobility? That's so. more like massage. If it's not flexibility, it's press trigger point release. I don't know if that. Yeah, I never don't mind. Know. I didn't mean to bring it up. It's not mobility. We should <laughs> talk about it. Forget it. Never happened. Well, you know, uh, send me your list, and I'll I'll have some homework. I'll give it a shot. Send me your routine. Yeah. Oh, and my friend is sending me a foot release thing. Oh God. No, it sounds really cool. It's like he called it the hip hook, but for your feet. But that's only because he'd seen my hip hook video. I was like, oh yeah, that this is how it'll make sense to you, which I appreciate. Mm -hmm. But it sits on the ground and it has these feet that come out. It kind of looks like an octopus, and the head of the octopus is this kind of smooth blade thing, not like like it would cut you, no. but it's supposed to. Well, see, I need to look into the science of it more, but it's supposed to break up all of that tissue that causes plantar fasciitis. Oh. And so you could be on the way to that type, that level of foot pain. You could be just sore. Yeah. But I'm excited to try it out. It's, I think it's in the mail on my way to me now. I'm excited. Can't wait to see it. Well, I've also been doing a bunch of barefoot walking. Well, barefoot shoes. Not actual barefoot yet, but that's the goal. Is it the goal? Yeah, for the video, I've already filmed me saying my goal is to go full barefoot on this walk, on this hike, hike. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And so anyway, my feet have been sore lately. So. Why, why, why don't you do a rock climbing barefoot? Does that make more sense? Dang it. Yes. Part two, coming soon. I don't know, now I gotta, that sounds awful. I don't lose a toenail. Yeah, you'd have to tape your toes. Well, that's cheating, that's not bare. Yeah, but that looks cool. Does it? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> it look like, uh, like, like, like a gymnast. Or like, it's like those, those bare knuckle boxers who wrap tape around their hands. Yeah. And dip their hands in glue and then dip their hands in glue and glass and then start fighting. <laughs> it's just like that. Just like that, but climbing. I'm, get, I'm assuming that's the scene in The Godfather. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, I haven't seen it. Yeah, they're fighting over the marinara recipe. Oh, that the, makes sense. Uh, yeah. Spaghetti recipe. Shakes out. <laughs> All right. Okay, well, get into it. We Sink into it. Sit in it. Oh, we should have said that at the top of the episode. All right. Sit in a split oh. and then listen to this whole thing. Too late now. We got to edit that to the very beginning. Ready to go. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> uh, okay, if you like this, rate and review on Apple Podcasts. And leave a review because we're going to review your review, reviews sh soon. We just keep saying we're going to do I that. Know, we, and we keep forgetting. But if also, if you're not flexible like me, please go ahead and say, like, it's okay. You're not a total loser, Max. That'd be good. Anybody want to claim that you're less flexible than him? Because he's saying he is the... The king. Least flexible human being. I've never seen anyone else. Anyone got him beat? Let us know in the comments. I doubt it.